Welcome to Journey to the Word with J.T. Olson. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, Lord, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Hi, woman from Wisconsin. Every hour, I need you. You're my one defense. My righteousness. You know, I'm always changing glasses. You just never know. Oh, God, how I need you. Yes. Let's see how these will work. I think I will be. When sin runs deep. Hi, Juliana from New York. Where grace is found. It's where you are. Hi, Geraldine. Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. I want to welcome you here today. Thank you, Geraldine, for putting in our, uh, placing our information in the comment box. Hi, Celine from Perry, Georgia. It's a blessing to see you all here today. Oh, God, how I need you. To teach my son to rise to you. When temptation comes my way. Hi, Devon from Tennessee. And when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Yes, Lord, I need you. I need you, Lord, this morning. For those of you uh, who may be joining us for the first time and I may not see your name on, we have our information in the comment box, how to stay connected with us. We want you to stay connected with us. We don't want you to just come one time. And for those who are on, we want you to invite your friends to come. And thank you for those who have invited your friends to come and join me. So I thank you on this morning. I pray that others will just come. I don't get a chance to. I try to always send out uh, the information. But I want people to just be so uh, addicted to this ministry that they just automatically know to come. Uh, in case I don't send the information out every Saturday to Wednesday. I try to. But we're just grateful to those who will come today without me having to send the information out. So, oh God, how I need you. And we need him every day, every hour we need him. It's just a blessing to be here. Um, I'm grateful. Hi, Phyllis from Memphis. I don't know if you're at work, Phyllis, or not, but we're grateful that you're on. And uh, God is just so good. He's so good. And uh, I just come on today, and, 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 and I'm just going to share the few verses that I have. Um, so I just want you to just listen today. I want you to take some notes as well. How to be thankful even when you don't really feel like it. Have you ever been there? <laughs> you want to be thankful you don't even feel like it. And so we're going to talk about that today. Um, so I just want you all to, to read the notes here. Um, you already know about our Bible study, our um, YouTube. We want you to sign up for that. We want you to go to our website. And you know how we love to pray. I love to pray. People often call me to pray because I love to pray. And we get with the intercessors every Monday. And uh, I pray in my prayer time every day. And, uh, and I get with the intercessors and they pray in their prayer time on Mondays. And so and then we have words to encourage you through the week. It's called the inspirational uh, reading that goes out. And we have a large database and it goes out just to encourage people to get through the week. So we, all, we, we always have something to encourage you. And then I'm here on my Wednesday, my just passing through to encourage you to get through the week. And then we come Saturday with our spiritual feeding. And so we just want to thank you and just ask God to just bless you this morning as you're listening. And that you have all these ways, uh, ways and, uh, of staying in contact with us, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, our blog. You have it all. So we don't want you to ever be without the word of God. We want the word of God to be present at all times. And so I want to thank you again. So let's just jump into this. So I want to be here uh, over my time and let's just get into it today. So how to be thankful even when you really don't feel like it. Okay. As we approach, you know, th this, uh, we're coming into spring. I can't tell because 
you know, I got snow everywhere, but the sun is out <laughs> today. But, you know, sometimes it's just, it can be easy to feel, you know, hopeless or anxious or even bitter. Uh, and then we can choose to fall prey to these feelings that we have. You know, we, 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 we go through, just like even coming into 23, everyone that I've spoken to just to ask, how was, how was 2023? And it's like, it's been a nightmare. Almost for everyone I talk to. It's like been coming in, <laughs> coming in like a fireball. And that's because as we know, as we get closer to the end times, and you've heard me talk about that, the enemy is pressuring in. He's pressuring in. He's going overtime. He's hitting at every angle. I mean, scam alerts are everywhere. You can't do anything. Anything you do, you got to try to watch and see if somebody is a scam, is a real person. It's a lot of craziness going on. And Satan said, I'm going to try to kill and destroy people as much as I can in whatever area necessary. And that's what he's doing. And so sometimes we can just become... Hi, we can just become, it's having knee surgery today. We'll pray for her when, uh, 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 woman's. And so uh, we just have this, all these feelings and all these emotions and all, and the murders that are going on in the nation and all, everything that's going on. And sometimes you just have a feeling where you just say, you know what, Lord, we really need you, but I don't know what to think at this point. I don't know what to do at this point. Hi, Lee from Ghana. And so we just don't know. And we have all these emotions that come up and, and it takes control of, of our lives. It takes control of who we are. Hi, Sharon. Good that you're on. We find ourselves in a special uh, a time, you know, that we feel like, okay, what is happening here? Uh, why, why am I not grateful? Why am I not thank, uh, thankful? Even though, even when we have Thanksgiving and even when we have Christmas, we have Thanksgiving. We, you know, we, we're supposed to be thankful, you know, for, for not just a month, but the whole year. So I just, I, I just, you know, want to talk about that today because I've talked with many um, followers and listening. Hi, Tina. It's good to see you on from Texas. And I hope you got that CD. And so, uh, so anyway, you know, we, we, we thank you, God, this morning, Lord, because people are carrying all these emotions and all these feelings and, and just don't really know what to do uh, because we're living in such a dark time. But I'm telling you, just as Satan has pumped it up, we need to pump it up with God's word. We need to be on fire like, like he have his minions running around acting crazy. We need to be on fire for the word of God. Um, and Father, so I just want to say now as we go into, into this, to my little brief message, at least for today, we thank you, Father, for this time. For this time, Lord, that you give us. Modern technology is not really bad. It's the people that get on there and do bad things. But you have allowed us, Lord, to reach the nations with our word. To reach the nations, to reach the world, and, and we're going to soon be on, 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 on live streaming and on TV where people will see and what we're talking about. We thank you, Lord, for choosing us for such a time as this and for allowing us to be living during this time. We have people every day. We're losing friends and families and, and acquaintances. Lord, help us not to fall prey to the attacks of the enemy through anxiety, through depression, through despair. Help us to partner with your Holy Spirit, Father, to step into the joy, into the victory, and into the goodness that you have for us. Grow us, Lord, uh, in us a new hope, Lord, a new spirit, a season in which we rejoice despite all that we see. We see a lot of things going on, Lord, that is, that is disturbing us. It's really disturbing us, Lord. But let us look beyond what we see, Father. We know that the dawn will come. But, Lord, until it does, we thank you for abiding with us in the dark. We're in living in a world of darkness, but he's abiding in us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing, all you have done, and all that you're going to do. The way I said, because we know he's going to do something. And all that he's doing right now that we can't even see behind the scenes of what he's doing, we want to thank him. We are, you know, for abiding in us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Hallelujah. For Lord, for all that you're going to do and all that you're doing right now, we want to thank you. Help us find uh, joy in, our, in everything that we do, Lord. Help us find joy, Father. And let us praise you. Let us give you glory and honor, Lord, whatever despite what we're going through today. And I know people are going through. I know this. This is not something I'm thinking or whatever. I know that we are going through much today. So how do we get through this? How can we be thankful when we don't even feel like it? We, we had to, we've gone through two years of what? Uh, a quarantine and social distances and that prohibit us during that time from coming with family and close friends and all of those things. We went through that, Lord, but we, Lord, you have blessed us. You have blessed us that we can come together despite we're not out of all the trouble, but 
we, we can come together, Lord, more so than we could during the going through the, the uh, uh, pandemic and all of that with the, the COVID. But, Lord, let us have, we are all struggling, but we're not struggling alone, Lord. It is when two people, two persons discover one another, when whether with immense difficulties and, and, and all of the things that's going on, C.L. Lewis said it like this. We share the same visions, and it is then that friendship is born. An instant they stand together in the midst of solitude. Open communication can be something to be grateful for, not to continue to dig deeper in a pit of despair. We don't want to keep digging deeper in a pit of despair. We don't want to get on a pity pot and sit there all month. But to help one another up, to help lift each other up in compassion and encouragement through authentic, authentic connections. And this is through authentic connection that we realize that we do not fight these fleeting hardships alone. We have to come together. There are too many people hurting. And we have to continue to lift each other up. The word of God say, if you lift him up, he said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so we want to lift each other up, whatever the person is going through. We want to keep them lifted in the name of the Lord. We need to have a, a faithful perspective and, and of what is going on. We need to know what is going on. Our perspective on events is much like wearing a pair of glasses. It's a certain lens that can help us see the, the blur of fear. Unknown things approaching or confusion where another lens can provide clarity. Let us choose to put on the lens of perspective that comes from the Lord. Remembering that he brings all things, not just some, together for good. That's in Romans 8, 28. Let us also put on the perspective that some of the difficulties that we face now perhaps are growing us in new and exciting ways. As scary as they look now, we have no idea what kind of good God is spinning out of this. Some of us are going through some things. Some of us know others that are going through some things and we're trying to hang in there with them. We don't know what God is planning. But we know we have no idea what kind of good God is spinning out of this situation. So let us try, let us put on those lenses. To help us that comes from the Lord, remembering that he brings all things, not just some, together for good. Romans 5 and 4 reminds us that even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence. Knowing that our pressures will develop us in us patience and endurance. We have to pray for patience. We have to pray for endurance. Paul had endurance. Some things we have to endure. And I know, I, I mention this all the time. Every time I come on, you hear me mentioning this. I know it's difficult, and I'm not telling you to be like, oh, you just, we, we can't even see the end of anything, and you want us to just sit here and just pray? Yes, I want you to pray, and I want you to give it to God, and I want you to trust Him, because all of us are going through something, something, and so we need to hold each other together, and, and don't go in hiding when you're going through something. Just share it. No, you can't share it with everybody. You have to be discerning and ask God, Lord, who do I share this with? And that's what we have to do. We have to pray. We have to ask the Lord, who do I share this with? Because some people, you know, we know they just like to talk and want to talk. But you need to go to God. What do I always say? Take it to the throne and not to the phone. And be selective in who you're talking to and sharing it with. And make sure it's another believer. And ask God, Lord, give me a discernment on who I need to call. He'll let you know sometime that person will call. And you'll be like, Lord, 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 I was just thinking about you. And God will give you that person to call. We have to understand that we need hope. And the hope that he gives us. We need patience and endurance that will refine our character. And proven character lead us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. Because we can now experience the endless love of God. Cascading in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Abiding in us. As nightmares unfold. Perspectives can be a lovely hand to hold. We can choose to partner with the Lord for his perspective that is that the good that is coming despite the circumstances. What has more time spent alone taught you? How can we evaluate these things and come back to him with a grateful heart for such rev revelations or ideas? A shift in perspective can take us from complacency to content. We need to be thankful and grateful for whatever it is. Even when we don't want, we don't even feel thankful. Because you can say, I received this, but I got so much going on in my, on in my life, I, I can't even feel thankful. But you got to look beyond that. You heard me talk about the breakthrough. And you got to get through. And you just go through until you're granted everything. Okay, we got to recall, we have to, and this is another thing, I constantly mention this in um, some of my messages. We have to remember 
that we have a history with God. Unless we've forgotten that we have a history with God, but we got to remember that we have a history with God. And that history will let us know that we can recall our former victories. Because victory is yours. Whatever it, whatever, I just, I can just get people to believe and understand. Whatever difficulty you have, you need to step and walk in victory. You need to start claiming the victory. And just start claiming. I, uh, two nights ago, I think my daughter called me in panic. And their dog had eaten some poison or something. And she was in a panic. And I said, sell down. She said, mom, pray. Pray. Because you pray for the animals all the time. Pray, mom. Just pray. And uh, because we're on our way to the vet now. It's 6 o'clock in the evening. And, and, and the vet, we, we, they're waiting for us to bring him in. And when she got there and they texted me back, mom, are you praying? Keep praying because we don't know how this is going to turn out. And I said to her, I spoke. I prayed to the Lord and the Holy Spirit said, he's fine. He's going home. Walk in your victory. And that's exactly what I told them. And her husband said, she said, she said, did mom answer back? And he said, yes. She said, claim it. He's going home. He's going home. <laughs> Walk in victory. And I said, he's going home. They're going to get that whatever it is out. Nothing is going to be wrong with him. He's going to be, he's going to be acting happy and he's going to go home. Just going to be there for an hour or so for them to go through what they need to go through. Whatever you have to spend, whatever. He's going home. He's been healed. And she called me at midnight. She said, mom, he is so happy. He's running around the floor. He's, we, we didn't think he was going to make it, but you kept saying, claim it and claim it and walk in. Yes, even animals. Just don't just pray for human beings and pray for animals as well. And I said, we just need to recall our form of victories. Heaven, God, can you recall? Recalling the past can help us in the present. I'm going to say that again. Recalling the past can help us in the present. Hindsight is always 2020. And perhaps that is what is needed uh, in 2023, is to recall his faithfulness in the past. The hopelessness felt now is not the first time such feelings have arisen. Yet we stand enduring. The, these, these hopeless feelings that you have in now, some of you have had them before. You've had them before. It's not the first time. Yet we stand enduringly when we list and recount the victories. God has seen in us that we can rest, that he is still on the throne today, and it is still working. And I'm just sharing you stories. I'm going to share you a few stories in a minute with some of the biblical people. But I'm going to share you some stories that I know personally and have have, have um. Talk with people. I, I remember this has been about uh, six years ago, six or seven, I think, uh, when the mother, and these were not young women, the mother of, uh, she had three daughters. And uh, they were going to take one to a, a, a doctor's appointment. The mother was in her um, early 90s. I, and she just passed two years ago. She was 99 when she passed. And the three sisters in their 70s, I think, 60s, 70s, yes, uh, was on their way to take one of the sisters to the doctor, and all three were killed immediately. And I had to sing at the funeral. And I was just wondering, Lord, how can someone do, how can, I mean, how? But she still had the grandchildren. And God said, but she still got the grandchildren, and I'm going to work through them. And I said, how? And when I saw at the funeral, she was smiling. And I said, I, I, I know your grief. And we're praying. She said, yes, it's, it's difficult to leave all your daughters. She said, but I gave them, let God take them back. They belong to him. She said, I'm still here. And I'm still here and I'm still serving God. And like I said, she passed two years ago. She was 99. And can you imagine losing your children, losing three daughters all together? So the funeral, three coffins, and they had to rent, they had to get the not rent. They had to use a gym facility for the funeral. Hi, Linda from Canton. And, um, but can you imagine that kind of grief? Can you imagine... Uh, trying to claim victory. Can you imagine trying to have some hope? Trying to stand when you've lost your, your three daughters. All that you have had. And you're still here in your 90s. God is so good. But she was happy. She had a smile. She said, God is still good to me. And so we have to understand when we list and recount the victories. Hi, Sarah. Let us know where you're from. The victories that God has seen us through. He has seen you and I both through many things. We can't forget that. We can't fall apart because something is coming apart. When we look back at, at our form of victories and see what he's brought us through, we have to recall because sometimes recalling the past can help us in the present. We can go back and look at our history. Yes, God is so great. Yes, he is. We want to welcome you and those who come on here, maybe the first time, maybe the second. We want to know what you're, where you're from so we can welcome you to the family. 
when we listen, recount the victories that God has seen us through, we can rest that he is still on the throne today. Hi, Carol Ann and the fur babies. That he's still on the throne today and he is still working today. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how it is, what is going on. That's right, London. He's God is good all the time. Many times the Israelites will remind themselves of the banners of victory that the Lord had won for them when things seemed bleak. In Joshua 4, the, the nation of Israel stood at the banks of the Jordan River, waiting for it to part. The Lord parted the river, and they walked on dry land to the other side. You know the story, I wonder. Be, be, but before moving forward, they took a very important step for the future. They erected 12 stones, each representing the tribe of Israel, to remind them of the faithfulness of the Lord. They did this in order to recall his faithfulness in the future to come. The same God who saw them through trials in the past will see them through the trials to come. The same God who seen you through your trials before is the same God who's going to help you through these trials. Perhaps create a list of the hardship turned hallelujahs that you have seen in the past. Sometimes we need to make a list. So maybe you need to make a list of the hardships turned hallelujah that you have seen in the past and then begin to thank God for the work he is doing behind the scenes. So how do you be thankful when you don't feel like it? You go back and recall the past. That's what you do. Be in a season where we can't even be thankful because of our emotions, because of the things we're looking at. And God said, wait a minute, you keep forgetting you got a history with me. Go back and start turning those uh, hopeless nights into hallelujahs and think about what I've done for you before. I don't know why we seem to have that uh, in, uh, uh, amnesia, uh, dementia, or dementia, or whatever it is that we may be calling it. I'm just saying using those terms for we seem to forget things like that when God has done so much. Not that we're losing our memories, but it's just that we tend to forget. And he wants to, us to just go back and think about all the victories. You see, the, the Lord parted the Red Sea, and they walked on dry land to the other side. But before moving forward, they took a very important step for the future. They erected those stones, they erected the 12 stones, each representing the child of Israel to remind them of the faithfulness of the Lord. They did this in order to recall his faithfulness in the future to come. The same God who saw them through the trials in the past will see them through the trials to come. Perhaps you need to create your list of the hardships that God brought you through that turned into hallelujahs that you saw in the past. And then begin to thank God for the work he's doing behind the scenes that you can't even see. See, he's doing work behind the scenes that we can't even see. What you say, one, is not enough paper to write it on. I know that's correct. I said, I can't do nothing but praise him as good as he's been to me. I can't do but praise him. Do not discount faith. Do not discount the faith he's building in you during this time either that you're going through right now. For those, those so going through these hard times, he is revealing more of the character being born in you. Birth is painful. But it results in new life. Should I say that again? Birth is painful. But it results in what? New life. Those of us who are mothers, we know. Perhaps these hardships are birthing a new vibrancy of life for you. That you're going through. All of the small things. More than ever, all the small things have become bigger. From eating in a restaurant to seeing a movie. To physically being able to hug a friend. We no longer discount the small aspects of life. That were once so accessible. Even if we cannot enjoy. Some people still you know, don't want to really hug. Um, because you know. They're still thinking that things are out there. But we're just, I'm just saying. That you can embrace and you can hug. And be thankful. You see listing five, thing, five to ten things in the morning. Can help us begin the day with a heart of appreciation. Even, even enough toothpaste for the day. Is something to smile about. Something to praise God for. You say, I don't have any funds right now. I can't do anything. But one of the symbols frequently written in the Old Testament is the rotten bush. R-O-T-E-M. It's a bush found in the desert that symbolizes the idea of just enough shade to get you from where you are to your next destination in the desert. God gives us these, rot these rotten, rotten, not rotten, but rotten. Rotem, some may play Rotem or Rotem, R-O-T-E-M. God gives us these Rotem bushes to show us he never leaves us in the desert. And that his goodness can be found in the worst of situations. Are you hearing me this morning or this afternoon? Life does not need to be completely perfect for us to find something to smile about. When we appreciate the smaller things, we also can then, we can then rejoice even more in the big things when they come. Life deserves more celebration for the great and the small. Shalom. 
Shalom is a Hebrew word meaning peace. It means peace. And perhaps being faithful comes from finding shalom in all times. Find peace in everything. And don't even let somebody disturb your peace. When we partner with the Holy Spirit and invite him to be our shalom, we are partnering, partnering with the greatest hope we can flood to us with peace. Even in events that strive to rid us of our peace. Some of us, it'd be so much chaos going on in our life that we can't even, we can't even think about peace. Would you say, yes, God is good all the time, not just in our good seasons. That's right. We can, we can't, sometimes we can't even find peace. Everything be so chaotic. But when we partner with the Holy Spirit and invite him to be our shalom, we are partnering with the greatest hope. We can flood us with peace, even in events that strive to rid us of our peace. And sometimes people want to rid you of your peace intentionally. Shalom and God guide us into a happy heart. For in his peace, we can find rest. Allowing him. To be our shalom also assists in pure thankfulness. For there is no other force or power in the universe that can truly satisfy your heart in such a grand, peaceful way as the Holy Spirit can. And Jesus said, I'm leaving with you. Your confident, your counselor and comforter. And we don't even call on the confident and counselor. But we can have peace. That reminder will bring us more richly into relationship with him. With reminders of his love and reminders of all we have to stand grateful for. We simply need to quiet ourselves in a deep breath and open our hearts to him. For he desires to be our home and our peace. It can be so difficult to find shalom in the midst of all the stress of the days. And it's this season as well. But it is possible in Isaiah 26, 3. It tells us you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Be intentional about planning time for just you and God. Be intentional about it. Don't make it an accident. His mind is stayed on you. So be intentional about planning, planning time just for you and God before all the family, all the cooking, and all the chaos. Because the chaos will come. Remind yourself of all the myriad of reasons you have to trust God and then let go and enjoy yourself. We have a new tomorrow. A new tomorrow, hope for the days to come is something to stand thankful for when we feel the strain of circumstances now as well. Each day holds new mercies, new discoveries, and new hope. That's in Psalms 104. Inspires us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. It said, give thanks to the Him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. That's in Psalm 104. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. His faithfulness is not limited to, to a single generation or time of year. And we can step into his course thanking him for all he has done, all he is doing, all he will do. Dream with God all the possibilities of what can be, what could be, and take advantage of the joy that will come now. Rejoice that he has not forgotten us. Rejoice so much good is coming. And rejoice that there are adventures to live. And jovial tears coupled with glad hearts to come. Partner with him now to build, to work, or to strive towards these things to come as well. Perhaps he is developing in you a new life skill or a new skill, hobby, or work during this time of, of just whatever you're going through. Rejoice with him in what he is building. And work with him to step into the fullness that can result. The most surprising glories can come from the life's unexpected times, I'm telling you. And you have people in the Bible, it's 131, people in the Bible. Hannah. Hannah is one of my favorite people in the Bible and someone I've learned a lot from. There's honestly isn't a lot of information about her, but her mark in the Bible is significant. Hannah was one of two wives to a man named Elkanah. Hannah was barren, but the other wife had many children. The other wife, Peninnah would taunt her regularly, and Hannah's misery was indeed immense. One night while in the temple, Hannah prayed fervently for a child so much that the priest Eli thought she was drunk. Hannah prayed that if God would give her a child, she would give that child back to him. And Eli blessed her request, and soon after she conceived a boy named Samuel, Samuel, who would become the great prophet of Israel and my favorite person in the Bible, one of them. What's beautiful about this story is that she did indeed, she did indeed give her son back to the Lord. She gave Samuel to Eli. Hannah's praise wasn't just a reflection of an answer to prayer, but it preceded giving up her son. With all of her heart, she praised God in the aftermath of turning over her biggest prayer request. 
Does your praise overflow from the good that you've had to let go? What perhaps your sacrifice was difficult? What about the mother I just shared with you that lost in her 90s, early 90s and lost her three daughters in their 70s? All three at the same time. Let's talk about David. David danced before the Lord in the street. I talked to two or three people yesterday. I said, God is so good. Why did I say God is so good? Because back out the back out the back. The money, we, the funds we needed to get the radio, uh, get the television going. And what we needed to help in other areas. It started coming in. I danced like David, y'all. I danced so much like David, my floors was probably wondering what was going on. My dog was sitting there looking at me. And he barked every now and then. He probably said, I want to get in that praise. Because God said, you keep praying. You're going to get there. I have the three people on here today that helped me get there. I tell you, God is so good. They sent that those blessings in, and I said, Lord, now i got to have sponsors now for each month. I just can't have these sponsors for one month. Lord, send the others. Touch their hearts. Touch their hearts and, and send the money, Lord. Let me get some more. Let me get six more on here that's sponsored so I have at least three months full while I get the people following me and funds I know going to come in. I mean, back after back they came, and I was on the phone with my daughter talking, and she heard something go ding. And she said, Mom, what is that? I said, oh, my goodness, some cash is coming through. Here they are. I said, Lord, here they are. You bless me, Lord. I asked, I said, Lord, if this television program is for us to get on, you're going to send the people to give. And I danced like David. I'm telling you, I danced like him. I was happy. And I have a tambourine here. And I started beating him and praising him. David danced before the Lord in the streets as a response of praise to his holy God. He worshiped after the death of his son. David is a man known for praise. Even in the darkest season of his life, as we see in the Psalms, he pointed back to the goodness of God, no matter what season David found himself in. He always had the perspective of praise. We can learn a thing or two from that kind of attitude. I'm sure it wasn't always easy, but he knew Thanksgiving was always necessary. One sister gave, the sister gave from up there in Tennessee, and the other sister turned around and gave behind her. And they gave the same amount, the same amount, and another person just sent it on through. And I said, okay, God, you're just so good. You're touching these hearts. So when I get on here and ask, I just trust God. And we're not a big membership or any of those things. We don't have members, but we have people. Yes, yes, Devon, God is so good. Yes, yes, would you say one today will be more in the name of Jesus. There will be more to come. Yes. Yes, and when I thank you, I thank you, you know who you are, and I thank you, and so I just thank God for you, because God knows, and you came in, and you did what needs to be done, and God's going to send me six more, just watch, he's going to send me six more, and so we're going to sponsor, and so each month, as a matter of fact, there is one, he's already told me, he's even not a member of here, he's just someone I know, and he, and, he's, and when he say he's going to give you a check, he's going to come through with it, and he said, and he said he's going to give, and he said, matter of fact, you'll be here later this evening. And he said, I'm going to be the one for the second month to start. So I'm just telling you, God is just so good. I just love him. I'm thankful. There's no way I cannot be thankful. Even when I don't feel like being thankful. Oh, my goodness, I'm going over. I've gotten excited. And then we have the third person who is, <laughs> we talked about Hannah and David. I just got excited when I saw David dance because I was dancing yesterday. Mary, mother of Jesus, finding out she was pregnant with the Savior of the world wasn't the easiest news to swallow. And the aftermath took some faith. But Mary, the young girl chosen to carry the baby Jesus, would exemplif exemplify great praise while visiting with Elizabeth who was carrying John the Baptist, who's Jesus' cousin, at the same time. Mary was pregnant with Jesus, and the young girl had a moment of exclamation. It's called the Magnificent, and it's found in Luke 1. Mary's heart was full of praise, and it outpoured into the world. A young girl filled with immense thanks knew exactly where her praise was to be directed. Do you know where to direct your praise today? Even what you're going through, hallelujah, bless his holy name. What are you carrying that at first might have seemed a bit fearful, but you can now be thankful for it. Hallelujah. Let's give God the glory today. The, he, the next thing, this is 137. The next thing, he healed the leper. When Jesus entered the village, Luke 17, there were 10 lepers that called out to him for healing. Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priests. And as they did, all 10 were healed. Only one returned to Jesus to thank him. Only one. That man threw himself at the feet of Jesus and gave immense thanks. Today, give him immense thanks. Give him immense thanks. Okay, give it today. And if you if you're on here today and you said, Lord, I don't see what I have, but I'm gonna write JP a check. I'm gonna be a part of that TV ministry where she's gonna reach the nation. If you stand with me and believe it, it's gonna happen. You can see now what this ministry is doing to help others. You're on here. You see it. Made a commitment to God, stand with it. God is going to bless you. I thank those of you who make commitments already to the ministry. But only one returned to Jesus to give thanks. Only one. And that man threw himself at the feet of Jesus and gave him his thanks. 
It's both amazing to think and sad that only one man returned. That's what something I said. I said, don't forget to thank God for what you prayed for. Don't forget to thank him when you give when he's giving you what you prayed for. Because so many do. It's often as I say, we have all these uh, prayer requests, and, and every blue moon will get a praise report. Well, we know God is healing people. We know that, but they won't come back and say, Well, thank you, I got the blessing. They go on with their lives. So we 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 want to thank you. We want to thank him today. The songs, I just want to thank you. So that man threw himself at the feet of Jesus and gave him his thanks. It's both amazing to think and sad that only one man returned to give thanks from healing from a de debilitating disease. When nine vanished into the crowd, one gave thanks where thanks was due. And we're going to give him thanks today even though we don't feel thankful because we're going through so much. Don't be like one of the nine that was blessed and move on. Stop and give incredible thanks for all God has and is doing in your life today. Number five, Jesus. And we're going to end on this. Jesus he was God and didn't have to give thanks for anything. But he often did, Jesus. He often did. Jesus set a remarkable example for us in many ways, but one way was in thanksgiving. And he was a man who gave praise to the Father in so many ways. He gave thanks as he was surrounded by thousands of, of hungry people and multiplied the, the food. He gave thanks to God for hearing his prayer for raising of Lazarus before Lazarus rose from the grave. He knew the cross was before him, and he gave thanks to the Father as he broke bread and drank the cup with the disciples, and that's what we did last week. And I'm telling you, it's so good to come on and have a, 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 just a small ministry, and, and it's big in God's sight, and you don't have a lot of members or whatever, but you have commitment. I have someone on here now sponsoring India and sponsoring uh, Gertrude there in, in South Africa monthly, uh, and God is blessing her. And I tell you, God is just so good. I said, Lord, it just... I said, you can get, get 10,000 no's and rejections. All you need is one yes. One yes. Just one yes. That's all you need. One yes from God. He knew the cross was before him, and he gave thanks to the Father as he broke bread and drank the cup with the disciples. We have a perfect example of righteous living from Jesus, and one thing he shows us is a position of praise and thanksgiving. What I find interesting is that all three of these instances were instances we might find tense. The pressure to feed thousands. And you don't see any food around. The disciples said, Lord, how are we going to do this? We don't see any food. Because we see a little lad here with two, two pieces of fish. And a loaf of bread. How are we going to feed all these people? The pressure to feed thousands. Raise a friend from the grave. And face death on the cross would be intense for any of us. We could not have done it. But Jesus' response was never to panic. Or run to people, but to turn to the Father. Stay off the phone and run to the throne. Stop panicking and run to Christ. How can you find that position of praise in your life today? What might you do to cultivate a natural response of being thankful? Not just this time of the season, but all year long. He's done so much of you and you're panicking. Because you, you, you panicked before. But he delivered you through it. Why are you, why are you still panicking? It's, it, yes, it's a normal reaction for us. Yes, because we're human. God knows our human frailty. But he's done so much for us. Too much for us. For us to keep forgetting that we got a history with the man. We need to stay close to the man, Jesus Christ. We need to stay close to him. It's 141. Let me close. I'm telling you, whatever you're going through, don't get in a position where you can't even be thankful. Because you're going through so much. Because you got to go back and you got to go back and write down some of that hopelessness that you had and turn it to hallelujah today. You got to do it. Did I think? I knew God was going to bless me. I was praying about it. And here, Geraldine praying with me about this television. There's a few others praying with me. I had someone on here today that faithfully gives and. And, 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 and say, JP, what is it that you need? I mean, I, I got 20, I got 25, I got 30. What, what is it? What else do you need? And I thank God. It is, if it is 30 and not 30,000, the 30,000 is coming. Just watch as we start reaching the, the nations and God start touching hearts to reach out to journey into the word. Because we love people and we are faithful and we're faithful to him and, and he's faithful to his promises. And God is going to do it. So I want to thank you today. I want you all to start worrying today. I really do. I want you to stop worrying. I don't care what it is. Doctor's report. Legal matter. Family matter. Health matter. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You serve a God. Nothing is impossible for him. 
And he gives names. He said, you want peace? Just call on Jehovah Shalom. You want healing? Just call on Jehovah Rapha. If you need me to provide for you, you just call on Jehovah Jireh. I see where you are. You can call on me. I see you. I'm Jehovah Shema. So many names. I want you today, stop worrying. I know it looks bad. I have to remind myself, don't you start worrying. You better go back and look over your victories. You better start, go back and look over your past with God. Your history. I don't want you to worry today, please. I'm asking you. Stop worrying. Don't feel hopeless. Don't be bitter. Don't fall prey to your emotions and these feelings. God's got you. What did I say last week? You go through till it's granted, because he's going to grant it. So I, I thank each one of you. I just feel that there's a heavy load with so many that's going through something. And I just said, Lord, what do we do? We call on you. That's what we do. I don't even go to the phone. I really I don't even go to the phone at all. I go to the one who I know. He's a problem solver. And yes, I, I have, you know, a few that I believe in strong and, and I can go to them. And every now and then I do. So it's not like I just don't, don't trust anybody. No, 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 no. I have strong believers and strong prayer warriors and strong prayer warriors to do breakthroughs. But sometimes I just find myself in midst in God's presence and praying and lifting others up and myself up. So I want to thank you today for taking time. I really do want to take, thank you for taking time. I'm so sorry. I washed my hair and it came, and my hair became an afro. Okay, it's all in my face. So anyway, I want to thank each of you. All right, let me see. I want to thank you, Lee, from Ghana. And I just want to say, uh, before we leave, if, I pray that God touches your heart to help us be on this TV program. I pray that whatever you have to give, we are ready and willing to receive it. If you're a tither and you give offerings here to our ministry, please sow. Stand in faith like the others that have given the other three, uh, my friends and my and, and those are my followers. You are welcome, Celine, um, who are so good. They're good to me and they're just good. And and God is constantly using them in their ministry. God has used them to start a Bible study. And they're just doing so many great things of the ones with the fur babies and all. I thank you, Celine, from Perry, Georgia. I thank you, Lee from Ghana, as much Wilma's from Wisconsin, Devon from Wisconsin, Carol Ann from Monterey, Tennessee, and Wanda from Monterey, Tennessee, and Phyllis Dodson. Phyllis, would you say hello, Phyllis? You got to replay. Well, awesome. Phyllis, I think, is at work. She's in Memphis, Tennessee, another faithful follower and giver. Uh, yes, Wanda and Carol Ann, faithful givers. And yes, we have so many of you on here. Uh, Julianne and others sharing who, like, like I said, is sponsoring our South Africa and, and um, uh, India. Yes, yes, we have. And so I have some faithful people on, and I really thank you for today. Pat Diamond, thank you, Pat. Thank you for being a faithful giver to the ministry. Yes, those of you who are on, I, I thank you. I, I tell you, I don't, I don't take it lightly, don't take it for granted. I just thank each of you. Thank you, Geraldine, for all that you do. And you do this and on top of giving. It's such a blessing. Thank you, Linda, for giving into the ministry. And I want you all just to consider giving again and ask God just to touch your heart and touch your finances. He's going to bless you. We have Sarah on. I'm not sure where Sarah is from. Linda's from Canton, Georgia. And let's see. I want to make sure I don't miss anyone that's on today. I thank you, Celine from Perry, Georgia, and Tina Step. Tina's here. Tina's from Texas, and Tina ordered a CD. Thank you, Tina. Sharon. Sharon is from Wisconsin. Yes, faithful givers. Wilma's faithful. All that I have on here, I thank each of you for sowing into the ministry, for being a part of our ministry, for being followers of our ministry. And we want to thank you uh, and, and tell Cla uh, Claudia Juliana was still praying for her. So I just want to thank you, one, each one of you. It's 147. And uh, I thank you. God is so good. I pray that this message touched your heart today, that you were able to grasp something from it. I'm always wanting you to grasp from something from the ministry uh, to take with you. So here we are. We're going to end. I pray that you have a blessed day, uh, a blessed week. I'm going to meet you here on Saturday mornings. I, I, I got to see you here. Y'all know I, I must see you. I, I'm smiling so happy when I see you on here. So I just meet me here Saturday morning. I thank you for everything. God is good. All the time, as we as we say that, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Yes, he is. And, and, and it's just become some of the part of us saying that. 
He is a blessing to us. And so we thank him. We praise him. Today we're going to be thankful. Even if we don't feel thankful. Because something has happened. The lady that lost her three daughter, daughters, she didn't have to be thankful. But she was thanking God. She said, Lord, they were yours from the beginning. I'm giving them back to you. Did I want to give them back to you this way? Maybe not, not Lord. To take them all at once? I, she said, I feel like Job. He, take them, he took them all at once. But they belong to him. So you think you're going through something until you hear someone else's story. And so I just want you to know, and I, and I, I, I know I play this song often, but it has become attached to me. Because every day, every minute, every second I need him. And I don't want to ever forget that. That I can't do it without him. So we're thanking him for what he's doing right now that we can't see behind the scenes. We're thanking him for what he's already done. And we thank him for what he's going to do. Because he know, we know he's going to do. When sin runs deep, it says, Your grace is more, Lord. When grace is found, that's where you are. And where you are, Lord. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. You teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you Oh I need you Every hour I need you my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You're my one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Thank you and bless you again with love and happiness. Peace, goodbye, and have a great week.